As we approach the election this Saturday, joining us to discuss the conduct and outcome of the presidential election of February 25 is Garuba Show and also concerns around the coming election this weekend. Garuba Show is a senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity. Welcome to the show, Malam Garubade Garuba Show. Good to see you. Well, quickly, you seem to be you seem to be in the minority. Yes, when you issued a statement that the elections conducted uh, on February 25, we seem to be an improvement on past elections. You said, well, there may have been issues, the beavers worked well, and that, uh, you know, INEC may have had the logistical challenges, but that, that was uh, a successful uh, process, the most competitive in recent history of Nigeria. Well, all of that will seem to be against the grain of uh, popular opinion about that uh, particular election. Uh, did we take part in two different elections? <laughs> no, Ruben. If you are talking about uh, assumptions that people have made, I'm not even sure our party was given the chance of winning the election, uh, especially if, uh, if uh, people are, are, are taken have taken to the digital media to read uh, the political temperature in the country, uh, you know, the digital space had been occupied by people of a particular point of view and had dashed away the election to a given political party. So I think the results also came as a shock to many people. Now, the thing then is, what is the VBAS equipment is supposed to do? It is to accredit voters before they, you know, they do the exercise. And I want to say that the, 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 the new equipment has done this so excellently well that it has helped the country for the first time, you know, to read the process of multiple voting and the fake, you know, voters and people who are not registered just walk in and then, and then do this exercise. Yes, there were glitches with the viewers because the second aspect of it is that it is supposed to transmit you know, results to the main server. It failed to do this, not because INEC was unwilling or government didn't want this to happen, but you know all of the things that happened. The Minister of Digital Economy, uh, Professor Pantami, announced that uh, 16 million attempts were made at hacking. On the, on the particular day of election, five million times at, uh, people had attempted to hack. So the thing is that there was a grand plan, possibly informed from outside or from within. In any case, there is sufficient capacity in Nigeria to hack. When you see all of the trouble, we and everyone is involved in this country, all cultures, all peoples are involved, you know, whether it is the theft of social security in America or whatever, it, or insurance money. I think Nigerians have developed an unusual capacity, you know, to achieve all of that globally. So if we're doing an election at home and uh, there is a chance to bring those skills here and try them, I think that uh, we are not disappointed that uh, 16 million times they had tried to hack. The important thing is that the integrity of the election was preserved. And so therefore, we ended up with the most improved election that we have seen so far. Of course, we are learning. And from this also, it's a learning process. Some new things will be learned and improvements will be caused as we seek to perfect our process. All right, Malam Shehu, thank you. But some people might put a big question mark to your statement around the integrity of the process being you know, intact. Besides the Vivas not working optimally, and one of the biggest game changers, or perhaps the benefit of Vivas in the last election, was the electronic transmission of results, which obviously at presidential level failed. And this has brought a big question to how free or how credible or, or the level of integrity of that process, which has been challenged by a number of people, candidates and some analysts. Beyond that, INEC had a budget of over 300 billion naira 
to prosecute this election. However, it was fraught with irregularities which the president himself has admitted to. One of which is logistics issues and you know, vi um, electoral violence across the nation. How would you put that side by side with your statement that judging this, the conduct of this election as being very good? Well, let me say to you that, uh, and I'm not a lawyer, but uh, from our own understanding of what INEC is supposed to do, the Electoral Act 2022 clearly says INEC has the liberty to choose the mode of transition, uh, transmission. So therefore, it's not by law that this transmission must be done electronically. Yes, it can be done. It's an option. But if INEC would do it and did it manually, that doesn't take away from the credibility you know, of the election. You talked about 300 billion naira being issued to INEC, and for which reason there should not have been logistical problems. This is a huge country, nearly 1 million square kilometers, 200 million people. It's, it's hard to think that there is any, we are not machines, we are humans. It's hard to think that we would, this thing will kick off, will kick off 8 o'clock on the dot in all of 176,000, you know, polling units. It's a very difficult thing to do. But you know that, as we have done in the country, in case your polling unit had opened late, ANEC had always made provision, even before this election, that hours of voting are usually extended. In some cases, it had even taken us to the next day. And so therefore, nothing, absolutely nothing is lost. And you talked about violence. I, 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 I have... Uh, seen a few of these reports and I don't deny that but to say that this election is characterized or anybody say well this is not your word but that certainly this is nobody can justify will say that this election had been characterized by violence yes a few isolated incidents but significantly all of the things we saw marked a significant departure from the past and for this actually this country has every reason to be thankful to law enforcement because they were effective and they made sure that 98, 99% of Nigerians voted in a free environment without fear or any sort of intimidation. It, it, it went well. Okay, Mr. Shehu, a couple of things and let's set the record straight. Prior to this time, you said that what was going on in the social media space was against your administration because some people from a certain political party dominated the social media space. That's not true. Your administration failed woefully. Inflation numbers, debt burden, higher, one of the highest level of poverty and insecurity as we speak today, all the indices your administration failed. And that's why a lot of people were surprised that the party got re-election. And you can challenge me on the facts and that I'm giving you the facts. Inflation numbers now is 22%, one of the highest in recent times. Uh, over 20 trillion ways that means debt. All the economic indices stacked against you. Secondly, you said 16 million attacks. No, it wasn't 16 million attacks. It was 12.9 million attacks that Mr. Issa Pantami said. And you also tried to extrapolate that to INEC. But INEC only said they had a technical glitch that day. Talks about cyber attacks were brought up, but INEC said it had no cyber attacks. That's to get the facts right. In fact, and people have challenged Mr. Issa Pantami on his results he released as regards cyber attacks in Nigeria for election day, vis-a-vis -vis the global cyber attacks map of what happened on that day. There's a story in Business Day a couple of hours ago. The question I'd like to ask you is, why was the pre only the presidential election not transmitted to IREF? Why did other ones go the Senate elections and the House of Representatives elections, but only one presidential election. Only one, not transmitted. INEC said it had technical glitches. It's not been able to tell us the nature of technical glitches. Today, you are trying to posit that there were cyber attacks. INEC said no cyber attacks. NCC said the network worked in that day. Okay, please, uh, <clears throat> did you say that... Uh the party, this, you said a number of things, problems, indices you gave. 
Did you say that the, the, that is why the, the party lost the election? Did you say we lost the election? So, Mr. Gabashu, do not, do not turn around what I said. This is what I said. I said you said that a certain okay. party had dominated the social media space. And they kept on hammering the party, yes, that there was no public right. opinion as regards the failures of the APC. And I put it to you that the economic statistics showed that this administration failed largely based on its initial promises, and which, which are there. Secondly, I've told you about what you try to extrapolate now with cyber attacks. But Einek has said that there were no cyber attacks that day, that they just had a technical glitch. Okay, let me say to you that um, as a government, we believe that we have done reasonably well. And we have delivered on all of the major promises that this administration has made prior to coming to office. And, and these things are key issues of security. We know what this country was like when we came in. Two count, one, this country had been split into two. We had, we had a caliphate carved out of this country by Boko Haram with the flag of their own system of administration, their own system of taxation, and all of that. 17 of 27 local councils in Borno State were in that republic. All of that has changed. So don't say that we haven't achieved anything. And when you mentioned all of these things about inflation, look, please understand that. There is a global crisis going on, of global crisis on, of cost of living that is simply not confined and alone to Nigeria. Everyone is involved, whether it is arising from the things that emanated from the COVID crisis, and we know what it has done, the entire economies of the world, everyone, perhaps except China, had, had, had gone into negative numbers in terms of development. <clears throat> now, and then there are all of the things about Ukraine and, and, and the Russia war with all of its implications for Asia, whether it is fertilizer and, and agriculture or fuel that we import from parts of the world. This is happening to everyone. And I tell you that this country, when you compare with what is happening in West Africa, in the entire continent, I think Nigerians have every reason to celebrate this administration. We haven't done as badly as everyone has done. In fact, this government has done so much in order to take Nigerians away and remove us from the excessive heat that had accompanied this crisis, COVID in particular, and then Ukraine-Russia war. Okay, the second question, well, thank I you asked. anyway for the numbers. On, the second on question I asked, you said... Uh, that the cyber attacks, we had cyber attacks in the elections, but INEC said they didn't have any cyber attacks on them. So I ask you again, what is now the reason why INEC couldn't transmit those results? You said there were cyber attacks. So well, what you, are you saying? Are you saying because of the cyber attacks or not, INEC had their problems? Well, the thing is that I'm not here to be academic on, on, on any matters. Um, the minister of the Nigerian government said there were cyber attacks. I'm supposed to believe the minister of the Nigerian government. If INEC said there were no cyber attacks, please bring the two together, the minister of digital economy, and let them resolve this issue. I'm simply a spokesman for the Nigerian president, and I'm not into all of those details. Okay, my president. I call you my president. People don't know that you, you were once yourself a president. <laughs> President of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. They only know you as, uh, you know, an Astro Rock spokesperson. But let me ask you, when we started this program this morning, the first thing we discussed was the front page story of this day newspaper today, talking about concerns about governors trying to rig the elections on March 18 because the stakes are higher. And you have already said, oh, what happened on February 25 was an improvement. Uh, from your own perspective, what will you be saying to those governors who are purportedly colluding, as alleged, with uh, you know INEC officials who may have bought military uniforms and all the people who are determined to do battle <laughs> at the ethnic and religious level on Friday, and the implications of those observations for the integrity of the electoral process and President Buhari's legacy? 
Well, let me say, uh, Ruben, that uh, before the presidential election, there were also predictions that uh, the country will go up in flames. And I want to say that uh, to the credit of law enforcement in the country, and, 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 and we must also give credit to the, the, the major contestants in the race, because you know, as a matter, by choosing to confine, to operate within the signed agreement, the peace agreement that they agreed to, going to court upon disagreeing with the outcome instead of taking their people to the streets, you know, or calling for strikes, that itself is important for the country. So it's a statement, it tells you that inherently we, we are capable, there's a capacity in our country, among our politicians, you know, to manage the situations without letting them getting out of hand. On specific issue of the election on Saturday, I do hope that the, the, the law enforcement agencies will be reading this day newspaper on the front page and they will be deciding on what to do. For the part of the president, I want to say that this government is elevated, is well above scandal or conspiracy on matters of uh, outcomes, uh, processes and outcomes of these elections. The president is determined that he will bequeath the legacy of the country's best election ever. And we're not disappointed so far. All right, just as a, just to dig a bit deeper into that, I'd like you to speak, speak specifically to the issue around security, particularly because from what, as Dr. Bati mentioned, some of the allegations um, is that some of these governors, sitting governors across the states in Nigeria, are conniving with security agencies to topple the result, topple um, or to instigate violence during the Saturday gubernatorial and state house of assembly elections. What is the security plan? We have heard assurances from the National Security Advisor, which we did as well here during the 25th of February presidential elections. However, that didn't stop what you term as isolated cases of electoral violence. Nigerians want to go out on Saturday. However, there's still that concern around safety. What's the assurance from the, gov from the president? Well, uh let me go back to the last election, and to, it has shown clearly that uh, um, governors are not gods in our affairs in the country. Uh, you know, it used to be assumed that when you finish being governor, you automatically walk into the Senate and take a seat there. I think about four or five of them had been shown that, no, you, you don't take Nigerians for granted. So uh, if Nigerians are determined and the sense I have is that law enforcement is ready for just everyone, including people who want to share money in order to win. The, the, the INEC has made it clear that if, if anyone is caught sharing cash, they will sleep, they will go to jail same day. And I hope that they act this out. So what do we need to do? Give Nigerians all the assurances that they need, that they, sh they just need to come out and exercise their own franchise. Nobody should intimidate them. Clearly, I understand and I accept the fact that there is desperation on the part of the governors, some of the governors, to win at all costs. But I tell you that law enforcement is ready also to ensure free and fair election at all costs. Okay, sir. <clears throat> uh while we're talking now, you said the government has done fairly well as regards insecurity, that the nation was divided by the time this administration came in, and all of that has changed now. Yes, there are considerable gains as regards security. I'll give you that. Uh, you said some people were paying taxes. Thank you very much. Yeah. We know considerable gains. Yeah. Some people were paying taxes, you know, to bandits to live in. Uh, you said all of that has stopped. I'm sorry to shock you, it's not stopped. As of 2012, a farming community in Kaduna had to pay 400 million naira in taxes to be allowed to farm. On election day, we had banditry activities in Borno. What will be done to be able to stop any banditry activities or terrorist activities in parts of the north and parts of the country on election day? Now, let me tell you that um, unless you live in, unless we live in utopia, there is no country that is free of crime, and I'm not trying to make excuses. This is a country where you and I know Muslims will not go to mosque on Friday. 
because they will be bombed. Christians will not go to church on Sunday because they will be bombed. Boko Haram had gone as far as to Kogi and was threatening to cross you know, over and, and go to Lagos. So the, the fact that in an election in which all 200 million people of Nigeria were witness to, and that you had one sli sli in in incident in Goza, I mean, nobody says the Boko Haram is no longer an occasional threat. The gain we have made is that it's no longer a sustainable threat. And so therefore, we, 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 we hope that at some point, even this occasional threat will go away. And when you talked about uh, ransom payment for kidnappings and in southern Kaduna and all of that, again, nobody is trying to say, we, uh, when I made reference to Borno and the Northeast, I was talking about the Boko Haram threat. From then to now, this country has been confronted by new challenges, some of them had not been with us before now. And the challenge then has been for law enforcement in the country to rise up to, to the challenge and to contain them. Uh, don't forget that before this hike that we had were effectively trying to deal with, uh, with kidnappings and, 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 and cattle rustling and all of that, you know, the clashes between herders and farmers had escalated to newer levels, although this is something that also had lived us from pre-colonial times. It had escalated to point that the government had to just do more than what ordinarily was required to do. And to say that there has sufficiently been a coming down, you know, of this incident. And the new one, which is these kidnappings and all of that, it too is going down. And it is helped greatly, especially lately, by the new policy by Central Bank to change our currency notes. Well, uh, Garba Shehu, just before we wrap this up, you issued a statement recently saying that President Muhammad Buhari has never directed anyone to disobey the rule of law. And yet critics of the administration <laughs> can list a catalog of instances in which, under this administration, public officials have routinely disobeyed the rule of law, disobeyed court orders, and nothing happened to them. If you could just shed more light on that. My sense is that uh, there are always consequences for disobeying court orders. And for President Muhammad Buhari, you know, if you are going to do physical wrestling, but President Buhari is not the strongest man physically in this country. He is being obeyed because there is rule of law. If there is no rule of law, obedience to government is able. Is, he clearly understands this. And I still stand by that assertion we made. He, president as a person, will never, that's not worry, call minister of justice and say, this is the rule to obey, this one don't obey. It will not happen, it has not happened, it will not now happen, now that he has just about 60 days to go. So please, uh, let, let's uh, forget about that. Yeah, there are rogue elements in all systems, in all administrations, and when they tra try to play tricks with the decisions of court, uh, the system works. In the, it has a way of catching up with people. Right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Bye.